I want to ask you, you were talking yes. about the political structure yes, of an educational mm -hmm. system. How important, mm -hmm. in your yeah. opinion, do you think that is? Um, I think it's very important um, that the leadership comes together uh, to actually decide what's the best for the country and what's the best for the students and how to move it forward. Okay. Right. So I understand that in the U.S. there is a two-party system where sometimes uh, there are certain issues that are tied in a deadlock right, because they can't agree with each other. Right. And I think with this, um, it's a little bit difficult to move things forward. Correct. So do you think it's a major issue in terms of actually um, that's hindering the improvement of the ed American education system? Yeah, for sure. It's, it really hinders the system, but the two-party system used yes. to work mm. and people would still argue, yes. but it's so fragmented right now. Mm. The Republicans want to kill the Democrats. The yeah. Democrats want to kill the Republicans. Yes. Nobody wants to give anybody credit for anything. That's right. That's right. And it seems mm -hmm. like the only time people come together is yeah. in times of like uh, things like wars. Yeah. In and Singapore, is it a one-party system? Uh, it's um, okay. In terms of the political leadership, it's mainly dominated by one party, uh, which we call the People's Action Party (PAP). So they've been in power um, since the founding of Singapore. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, and that's that's one of the reasons why the education system has been able to move forward. First, I think the political leadership, as in China, places a lot of emphasis on the education system, right? Because people are our main resources in Singapore. So if you look at Singapore, we're so small, we don't have any natural resources, mm -hmm. right? Uh, it's because of our strategic position, in terms of being, uh, um, being a, uh, at the beginning it was a port, that we could actually receive a lot of ships in the world. And secondly, uh, the main resource now in the information economy will actually be our people. So um, our political leaders make it a very important point, right, to actually prepare our people, our younger citizens, right, for the workforce of tomorrow. So essentially to us, it's basically about survival. Why do you think the, the culture in Singapore right. is so, so strong about the yeah. importance of education? Okay. Um, I guess it's, it also has to do something about Asian roots, mm -hmm. in the sense that uh, the parents, play a very in, uh, uh, active role in the development of the children, especially when all parents uh, want their kids to do well. So I guess this is where we are a little bit different from our Western counterparts, mm -hmm. in the sense that I, I guess, I mean, correct me if I'm wrong, but if Westerners want the child to develop holistically to nurture their talents, right. which itself is right in a way. Um, whereas um, for Asi Asians, we are, uh, we are more focused on success. So we try to actually get our uh, kids to actually have early hit start, um, to actually hit the ground running. So right. that's why uh, there's a lot of involvement of the parents, especially at the early ages, sure. to help the kids develop. Right. But um, I guess one of the things we can improve on, upon, uh, improve upon, which we can learn from, I, I think, the Western countries, will be to, to actually also to nurture the talents of our kids. Maybe to take a more balanced approach. And I think that's why our education system has been evolving. Right. Take a look at that. But I mean, I yes. see a lot of those good things here because, for example, you know, we talk about the arts and music yes. in the U.S., but right. Right. even at my own school, there's many kids that are not allowed to take art or music. Oh, really? We've cut that internally okay. because kids now we say, well, we'll double up on math. For okay. example, the I kid's see. failing algebra. Okay. And he's probably two or three behinds in math. Okay. In math. But we'll tell him, no, you're going to have a high standard. You're going to do algebra. Okay. So he's... He gets their D and an F in algebra, and, mm -hmm. and so the next year, and letting, and, and, and instead of giving them motivation and letting them do something or yep. her something yes. that they want to do and they're yes. probably good at, yep. we'll take that away from them arbitrarily, and we'll put them in another algebra, okay. another math class. Okay. So he'll just hate it twice as much. Okay. And regularly, mm. at least throughout California, yes. uh, there are very few school districts that have art and music programs. Okay. They've cut I those see. things. I didn't see that here in Singapore. Okay. Uh, in fact, I saw where things like music and art were compulsory, yep. and actually right. they're hiring more music and art teachers That's now. Right. That's right. And and so they're kind of moving from to that holistic approach. That's right. So That's right. I personally see what I see here in Singapore, unlike I've seen in any other Asian country that I yes. visited. I was in Taiwan last week and Korea the other week. Okay. Is you have kind of a culmination of the East and West That's right. That's right. merged here. So yes. the best of both. Yeah. Okay. Got the hard work ethic, the early childhood yes. start, good parent, strong parent values, yes. okay. and, you know, uh, mixed with um, 
you know, the, the appreciation for like, I think I saw a fair amount of kids doing sports. Yes. I didn't see this in Korea. Okay. You yes. Know? I think uh, it's important uh, in Singapore that we believe in giving our all our students a firm foundation in mul uh, in different disciplines. All right. Maybe aesthetics, maybe maths and sciences, mm -hmm. maybe languages. Um, I think we've done pretty well in this aspect in giving kids really um, a good foundation in multi uh, multiple disciplines. So uh, one key uh, strength of our system that I feel is that we are never contented with where we are. If you look, if you look, listen to the messages by our leaders. It's always, oh, we've done well, but, but we need to, we yes. need, to, we can't stop. That's we need right. to look for, and that's, that's right. what I see in Singapore. Yes. That's right. right. That's, that, that's the key strength that determine that how we are always improving, right? And we're always staying at the top, right? Because yeah. what works today may not work till that's tomorrow. Right. Correct. So our leaders uh, do a lot of scanning, external scanning, right. across different education systems. For example, Finland, the US, right. and so uh, even China, right, to see what we can, what the gems. Be fair, I'm not the best person right. to ask right. because I've never been in a primary school. Right. But uh, if you know, if you've been to the conference the last two days, you notice that we, uh, Singapore actually evolved from a series of ICT master plans. Mm -hmm. So uh, the first plan, uh, master plan one, one, was actually about building the foundation in terms of facilities and so and so forth. Right. Number two, master plan two. Each, each master plan is three years. Uh, no, it's about five or six. Five years. In okay. fact, it's, it's almost about 18 years okay. since the ICT master plan started. Right. So uh, it actually uh, improved all schools. So um, the second master plan was about seeding, about tr uh, for teachers to explore technology, mm -hmm. to try out certain things. And number three was more about uh, putting it into the curriculum, infusing it as a as way to enhance teaching and learning. Mm. So it was actually done across all schools. So I was, to answer your question, I would say that most primary schools will have a certain level of ICT competency. Mm -hmm. Right, in uh, the teaching and learning. But I don't think yes. Singapore sees this as the holy grail, that's that, right. that technology is going to solve that's right. all that's the right. problems. That's right. Actually, um, we're using technology, number one, I guess, to prepare the 21st century mm -hmm. uh, student, or perhaps the worker of the future. Right. Uh, again, back to the question of survival. So we always want to stay ahead, we want to stay relevant, so we want to know what skills or competencies the employers of tomorrow will need, and therefore, we try to actually uh, see how we can embed into the curriculum to mm -hmm. develop this kind of this kind of citizens of tomorrow. So I guess that's very important. For but us. but yes. still, teacher drives the whole thing, right? That's the quality right. of the teacher. That's right. That's right. right. Yes. I so, don't know. Yes. I don't know if you know this, but in the U.S., yes, um, fifty percent, at least fifty percent of the teachers yes. regularly come from the bottom quartile to okay. the bottom one third. Okay. So there's a huge difference in how teachers are chosen and that's right and the qualifications. That's right. And also, uh, the institutions in the U.S. You can you can get a teaching credential almost anywhere. Okay. Everybody offers one. You can pretty much get one online. Okay. So you have a multitude of places, which means there's not a there's not much quality control. Okay. There's no baseline standards. No baseline standards. Where here, I think the the institutions are. Okay. At least the way I understand it, yeah. are much more regulated, and and, right. and there's a lot, there's a there's a good baseline of where right. everybody needs to be, That's right. right in terms of quality. I guess it also has a matter to do with size. In right. terms of Singapore, because we're small, right. uh, we only have uh, effectively one teacher training school. That's the National Institute of Education. Oh, so all teachers have to pass through that. So if you set the baseline standards there, it's actually all teachers will have a certain competency. Mm -hmm. But I guess in the U.S. because of uh, the decentralization, so mm -hmm. many states get to control teacher quality and so on and so forth. Right. So there might be there might be no baseline standards, there. and of course there are so many things. There are, there are so many districts around. It's difficult to put. Uh, it's difficult to set common standards across. Right. I guess so. That's one of the perhaps uh, the advantages of the Singapore education system. Right. It's